Welcome to today's episode of Youth in Service, and I am Idris Dauda. I'll be your host for today's episode, and with me is Goda Unifadi. Yeah, I'll be the co-host for today's program, Youth in Service. And you might be wondering, who is this handsome guy with us here? So he's our guest for today. So guest, please introduce yourself. Um, my name is Ogundimu Ololadi David. Yeah, and for today, today's topic is quite an interesting one. And for you to figure it out, you have to stay with us till after this break. Welcome back. And if you are just joining us, this is Youth in Service brought to you from NTA, Abel Kuta. So today, our topic for today's program will be Oblivious Lifestyle Among Youth. So, Mr. David, are you ready for us today? Yes. Um, um, yes. As she has said, it's, um, today's topic is oblivious and materialism among our youth or coppers. And in case you are wondering, ah, this English is too much. Well, oblivious is just living an I don't care attitude or I don't care lifestyle. And yeah, materialism yeah, is yeah, just yeah. showing off what you have or, exactly. or using materials to, to achieve your success or to de uh, dictate your success. Um, today, um, oh, good morning, that David. Um, can you tell us how these two relate to our youth and how, how they relate? Well, um, oblivious lifestyle, like the word oblivious, it's like a state of being unaware and, like you said, nonchalant attitude. Non, like, oblivious lifestyle leaves um, um, its victim in a state of not considering or caring the dangers that the lifestyle that they live um, poses on the youth. While uh, materialism is um, an act of being excessively um, um, wanting of material things, you understand? Regardless of the pros and cons that it pulls out, you understand? So, I feel the synergy between these two, um, um, these two state of mind is um, the fact that the person, the victim who is like um, suffering from this um, mentality, the synergy there is that they don't really care, understand? They, 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 they are like addicted to it, they don't really care the um, disadvantage and the effect on the youth and the society. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. David. So, um, I'll be asking you this question. Right. Would you say these two oblivious, this thing and materialism, would you say it has done more harm than good? What would you say about that? Well, I feel, yes, definitely, looking at the society that we are today, unfortunately, I would say that this lifestyle has um, done more harm than good. Because first and first, like, as youth these days, we are we are we are already getting old too too quick like we are we are we are dying very early like because we really want to like accumulate so many material things at a very young age at the end of the day it doesn't make our life have a sense because let's say at the age of 30 you've already had the car you already have a house you already have so at the age like before you get to 50 life loses value to you because exactly. you feel like you've achieved everything you want to achieve already you understand and another thing is most of the youth don't they don't know when to stop or they don't know the boundaries to not cross balance, yeah they don't know yeah. how to balance it so they just feel like yeah my mate is doing this i have to do this you understand mm -hmm. they, they just they just go all out okay they don't know when to draw the line yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so um before i ask the question are you saying it is um, at the age of 30 accumulating so much so much is actually too much no i'm not saying like at the age of 30 like let me first say this first age is just a number yeah and i feel like um after you're being born you need to like decide for yourself like when is the right time for you you don't have to dance to the train of other people you understand because our part in life is quite different and unique so because my friend actually at the age of 30 has a house and a car and i am not opportune to do that does not mean i have to um i have strive. to not like it's good to strive but <laughs> does not mean like i now have to like inconvenience others you understand or do things that um, are wrong, ethically wrong, okay. just because I want to achieve that, you understand? Okay. That's what I, f I feel like we should learn to just flow with life. Mm -hmm. that, that's just my ideology. Uh, yeah. So, David, um, how has this lifestyle, this um, oblivious and materialism lifestyle, how has it affect um, the youth? How, how does it have any any disadvantages to the youth? <laughs> I, I, would, I, would, I would say, it's like what I said earlier on, the disadvantages are are tremendous okay like just a few days ago we woke up to the news of teenagers okay who bearded a girl just yes. for ritual yes. News. yeah so it, it gets you thinking if somebody if a, a, i can't remember what i was doing at 17 
if at 17 like your mindset is the mindset of to our, make money uh, yeah to, you understand yeah and i feel like the media is not really helping i feel like the media is not helping i feel like the media should um um i, I feel more of social media and blogs i feel like some news or some things are like right now in the society fraudsters have been adored in the music um bloggers are always like they even pay these bloggers to like to heal them understand so yeah. i feel it's like if you go to secondary schools now you see kids in secondary school using iPhones, exorbitant price amounts of iPhones, exactly. and nobody's asking questions. So I feel like it's already creating a, a, a sense of responsibility too heavy for these kids. Right. Okay, so um, um, what are, what do you say are the consequences of this oblivious last night? Like, because I know you've mentioned some why we're yeah, talking about yeah. some major consequences of this lifestyle. I feel one of the consequences of this lifestyle is the fact that you can't close your eyes to sleep. Exactly. No. You are not safe. You are no not safe. safe. You understand? That's one yeah. of the consequences. The fact that whenever you're going out, you have to double check. Like even in in our, in our environment where we were born, that we are supposed to have like freedom, we still walk around feeling like you understand. We walk, along, we walk, we walk we, around with, with fear. With fear. Yeah. You understand? That's the that's the, that's the consequence. That's the consequence. Uh, yeah. So um, how do how can youths or couples overcome this? Like for, uh, like for people that have this mindset that like, oh. Um, my friend is using iPhone 13. I have to use it by all means. My friend is driving a Benz. I have to drive it by all means. How can they? How can they? Um, how can they clear their mind of this okay, philosophy okay. and follow the right path? I feel like they should digest more of um, contentment. I feel like we don't really preach contentment enough in various institutions, religious institutions, social institutions. Like when you go to school, like I feel like they don't really teach more about contentment. They just really teach us more about how you can make the world a better place by forgetting that one of the ways that you can make the world a better place is is by not destroying it more than you met it. You understand? And I feel like one thing about contentment is contentment is a great virtue. Exactly. When you know how to like maximize um, maximize what you have you understand without like inconveniencing others i feel like it's a great it's a great virtue so i feel like youths and coppers out there should really understand that no matter how no matter how um difficult it is in life you are actually better than someone exactly. regardless of the exactly. fact that yeah. someone is better than you yes. you understand so you should always look in the mirror and look at yourself and feel good about yourself even if you your your friend your childhood friend is using an iphone 11 and you have a phone remember that someone doesn't have a phone somebody mm -hmm. doesn't even have a hand to press a phone yeah, yeah. so i feel like it's just contentment that's the only thing i'm going to say okay um thank you for that point that beautiful point so yes. um david what would be your advice for youths around um, in the society like what advice would you like to give our, our youth out there well my advice to the youth presently i feel presently right now i feel like we the youth right now we we are already like this yoruba philosophy of dried fish like we're already too dry you can you can't break them right now you understand okay. because every youth out there is hell bent but i'll just say to the fresh fish out there that can still adjust that most of the decisions we have to make right now should not just be for ourselves it has to be for the coming generation i have this personal philosophy and i pray it doesn't come to pass because i tell it to my friends that you see the coming generation our kids they are going to suffer more mental breakdown than our present generation and it's just due to the decisions that we this present use are making yeah. so for that not to happen i feel like the advice would have to be that the coming generation should learn this generation rather should learn how to teach um ourselves to be contented with where we are and at the same time to take it one step at a time yeah. i think the um the, the 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 fastest way to get to wherever we are going is to take the steps slowly us wow. at a time you understand it yeah that's just yes. it thank you yes and um, um thank you for staying with us we'll be back after the short break <laughs> Welcome back to the show. And in case you are just joining us, you've missed, but you've not missed a lot. You understand? It's brought to you live from NT Abelkta Channel 103 on Star Times. And our topic for today is oblivious lifestyle and materialism among our youth of couples. You understand? We have a good demo Olola Day David with us. Yes, We've David. actually discussed a lot in case you missed it, but we have more to talk about. Um, David, in what way as um, school? contributed to this oblivious of materialism in, in our in um i feel like um one way that this um our schools have like um 
contributed to um, the um, celebration of this menace in our society. Number one is because number one, I feel like schools, our schools are not teaching more about the virtues that comes with contentment. Like I feel like the school is all is just all centered about graduating with good grades, and the school is not letting you know that even if you don't graduate with good grades, there's still a place for you in the society. Understand? The school is creating more rejects than more accepted people into the society. So once these people feel like I cannot blend into the school and feel like okay, the school is not there's no place for me in school, they feel like the next place for them to go is go out and try to make a way for themselves. You understand? There's this popular um, ideology that the school school is scam. You understand? But the truth of it is that school is actually not scam. School uh, our schools are supposed to be a place that teach you that for whatever your strength and weaknesses are, there's always a place for you in society. Mm -hmm. Not that you always have to come out like the society is always made for people in um, that graduate with first class, second class. You'll be even surprised that some people are actually past graduates and they have institutions that are employing first class students. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I feel that's one way the schools have actually um, um, affect. And I feel another way the school has encouraged this is. The fact that some lecturers knows that okay this student is actually is, is a fraudster you understand but because of the money you understand flashed in their face these lecturers will go ahead and pass these students because they are uh, i don't that there are instances where 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 like students buy lecturers exuberant gifts exactly. you understand you understand so that lecturer is already at the beck and call of that student exactly. you understand so i feel these are one of the ways that um, um the school are encouraging these people um sorry david to ask you now you are pointing out um a higher institution in university polytechnics and and um, college of education what of those secondary school you know now nowadays exactly. you know, yeah. Yeah. These young boys, boys. Yeah, yeah, school, yeah, yeah. Where, where i feel you? i feel like yeah um in secondary school i feel this is if i i was talking to a friend and i said we should go out and do more sensitivity in the secondary schools to um, prevent our girl child from being um, victims of ritual um, items, you understand what I'm saying? At the same time, we need to teach these boys from the secondary school. It's just that, you see, you, you know, I feel like the way that secondary schools have actually um, um, contributed to this is the fact that secondary, I feel the secondary school, most of this, especially public secondary school, okay. they really don't pay attention to the um, social development of the male child. Mm -hmm. I feel they are all, only concerned about the academic development of the male child you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. so for example you you as a teacher you see um your child come to school at this as a second i saw a video of secondary school students driving cars to school and i'm like okay what is the principal of the secondary school doing what wow, are the teachers wow. doing? Idris, you, understand? <laughs> you understand like i you, under, you, you oh, get what okay. i'm saying so i feel like um the fact that these teachers are probably carried away with their own personal life mm -hmm. which doesn't even give them the time to like you know pay attention to these kids but there's this Yoruba um, philosophy that, uh, or proverb that says, see, when your neighbor is eating um, a bad insect and refuse to warn him, then by the time he starts disturbing you in the midnight, you won't sleep also. Yeah. So I feel like that's, that's, what's, yeah. like, that's what is happening to us right now. Okay, um, that, thank you for that beautiful point, Idris. But me, I feel that the parents have more jobs to do than actually the school. Because okay. the, the duration of those people in school, I mean, you are just going there to teach. No, no, let me let me ask you a question. English yeah, teaching. I understand, I understand. But let me give you, let me give you. Well, a, you know, you know, most of these students they spend most of their time in school. Yeah, that's my, that's my point. That's, that's my point. Like, that's my point. That's exactly. Like, thank you. That's like that's eight hours. Or that's something like that. So you understand? They don't spend like few hours. Throughout, throughout the period. six years, throughout the six years you spend in secondary school, school, you spend more time in school, in school than, than with your parents at home. Yeah, because you know, few see. I feel like some students are actually very notorious and and some parents kind of encourage these things. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know why? why? Because the thing is, um, if you look at Africa right now, the the rich the rich percentage of Africa is I think approximately like twenty percent. We have then the middle class holds like I think about like thirty percent, then we have like fifty percent of of poor of the poor people. You understand now? Yeah, so please, you have to, you know, some some people just have their, their um, uh, ideology that's okay. A poor person is someone that, that, that does not have money. But, you know, according to um, UN, they said a poor person is someone who can't afford to eat one, um, a food of one dollar. That is like 300 or something. Well, 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 in my own context, when I'm talking about poverty, I'm not really talking about maybe um, monetary poverty. Even 
mental poverty. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, because that's, if that's yeah, because even following that statistics I gave, like I still feel like we still have like twenty percent of properly elite educated people that are actually financially okay also. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah. Then we have like let's say about thirty percent of people who are like well educated and are still trying to like in the middle class juggling. Yeah. Then we know that fifty percent are like if you check among the poor people that we have in Africa today, major majority of them are illiterate. Yeah. You understand? So yeah. they still fall under that category. So what I'm just trying to say is the reason why most of the parents would actually indulge their parents their kids in this thing is because number one, um before I feel like before you talk sense to a man's head, you need to feel his belly first so yeah. that he can have the strength okay. to like process yeah. what Absolutely. you're saying. So yeah. right now you can't like you you can't ask a parent that has been poor like um, virtually all their life and they are seeing money flashing in front of them. The only thing I feel they could do, they could, they would probably do is like first like at first try to like you know be curious about. But on the long run, they will come to they will come to they will come to like come to terms with it, and that is the problem. The fact that we can condone these things in our society is yeah. the problem. The fact that a a mother can take a child. To meet a fraud star that please let me train this my child to become a fraud star like you. Wow. I don't want to care what you're doing, but as far as you're making money, money is you know money is the only language you speak now. You understand? So since now money has not money has not just become a means to an end. Money is now a means of communication. So people will even hear you if you're not talking money. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah, so uh, exactly. yes. Yeah. So Femi, you know, um, sorry, David. You know they say um, it takes a woman to give birth, but it takes a community to so, to yeah, train, train the child. So what what um, what impacts? role does the community or the society? Let us say community. You know, someone we say society, we are enlarging. It, it, someone we say community, maybe the streets or the compound where the child yeah. grows up. You understand? Yeah. If if the parents cannot talk to the child, at least the neighbors should be able to talk to the child. Look, come here. I saw you grow up. You can't do this. Thing, you can't do this. Thing. But it still boils down to the parent because when when a neighbor is talking to his or her child, that hey. Where did you see money to get this kind of phone? Where did you see money mm-hmm. to get? The parents are actually not that child. What is your business as a neighbor? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. So it's, it still boils down to the fact that you see in Africa right now, at the, at this present stage, you know, back in those days when the um, the society was still collective, exactly, yeah. it was easy to correct. Like back in those days, you understand. If a child, can beat yeah, a you child. Can, yeah, you understand, and the mother will understand, so even though if the mother is not happy about it, but the mother knows that, to talk yeah, because even the mother, mo- yeah, moral because, moral yeah definitely, there's no way you'll beat my child and I'll be happy with it. But for if I know that, okay, you are correcting this child for the good reason, back then it was cool, but now, like, our society is more personal, it's just like this, the society now is like a gate man, whatever you want to do, the society opens the door for you mm-hmm. to do what you want to do, like. Okay. They don't question you like who are you coming here to see? You understand? The society is like that it gives you that freedom. That freedom. Too. You understand? For example, yeah. now you go you go to church, you understand, you go to church and you see a, a boy of 18 year old, you understand, contributing exorbitant amount of money to the to the construction of the church. And the pastor is not asking questions because exactly. the pastor feels like God has God blessed. Has you, blessed you. you understand? We go to weddings, you understand? We yeah. see we see young boys spending money. money. And even the MC, in fact, does not even yeah, recognize the them. elders in the party yeah. anymore. Uh-huh. You understand? Yeah. So I feel like it still deals, it still boils down to mental poverty. Like, we are poor in the head. And this poverty in, in our head has, gi- has, has given room to, to, um, to the death of so many ideals and values that we've grown to learn as a society. Exactly. Yeah. So I feel like the only thing the community has done is the community has stopped asking questions. Exactly. That's just exactly. Yeah. Um, sorry to to ask you again. You mentioned pastor. Can we say religion is playing its part in the in this in this oblivious? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Like the thing is, I'm I'm not one to talk about religion because I I'm a, I, I I like to keep a free mind because yeah. towards things. Yeah. But the thing is, I feel like yeah, definitely religion is playing a big part because if you if you by the time you go online now, you see that you hear a past, back in my school, a very close friend of mine. Also, a neighbor of mine was used for money ritual. And when we got down to the whole issue, we realized that it was a pastor that asked the boyfriend of the girl to use the girl, to bring the girl for a ritual. So you, you, you tend to ask, like, a pastor. Now, we might say, okay, there's, there are different type of pastors. pastors there are pastors, yeah. but you can still take it on. You, can't, exactly. you can't take them away from it. The, the same way you still hear about some affairs. Some affairs will be pounding soup and stuff yeah. like that. And you tend to wonder like when is this you know is this 
um, is this theological? You understand? Does it go along with the doctrines of your religion? Okay. Then I feel like at large, our 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 African traditional religion, mm -hmm. the worship the Ogun worshippers, the mm -hmm. I feel like they are doing the most of exactly, it. Exactly, because yeah. they are the one that does you understand. This ritual you, you understand. Guys. So even uh, on, on, from another angle, even seems as if Christianity and Muslim and um, Islam is just like it's just like um, some some of these people that are perpetrating evil through this religion. It's just like the African traditional re religion worshippers, but mm -hmm. because they know that. People don't feel comfortable going to our list anymore. So they go to so they know the, uh, yeah, you understand. So they just you so get what I'm saying. Yeah. So I feel like religion is another is another another thing we should we should get rid of as a society is the is the mentality that you know because I feel we should start thinking rationally. Okay. I still want to I still want to believe how killing a human being will be, yeah, will produce you exactly paper more, cash. Yes. So I still is want to CBS CBN license yes, or you understand. understand. So you get but. For the fact that people are doing it, I, I want to I want to have like a one percent. My own concern is this. I feel like for somebody that is doing it, I feel like if you want to do something, you should check the person that is doing it. How is the person like and yeah. somebody will now tell you somewhere that okay yeah. if you do this you have yeah. this one. No, 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 yeah, yeah, sorry, don't I'm, get it wrong. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Don't get it wrong. Like I I I, I saw I saw um, a documentary on YouTube. They interviewed like an herbalist. Yeah, I, I saw yeah, it. and the herb the herbalist was very very plain he said they want these guys they tell these yeah. guys the repercussion the mm -hmm. reason why these abalists will not do it for themselves and do it for their kids is because they know the repercussion yeah. and they tell these guys the repercussion but they don't care yeah. right? but these guys don't care they just want to like do you know so i feel this money ritual of a thing is actually it's 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 yeah it's in hollywood that gives birth to this money oh, which okay, okay you feel the mid the not even the media, media. Yes, yes, yes. yes 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 so money you see ritual. movies of um yeah i don't know ibu's movie yeah, ibu movies you see that not really ibu. Ibu, 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 i feel every i feel i feel yes. i feel i feel every but they, they actually give us the, okay when you did this is a consequence this is a proportion but of i would i would know i would know what to feel, say. sorry sorry yeah. i would not want to say that okay maybe ibu's or outsiders mm -hmm. or their movies the thing is to be truthful to ourselves, before religion came, yeah, rituals were part of our African traditional religion. Exactly. You understand? Yeah. Rit rituals were actually part of our African traditional religion. So I feel like we cannot just say that okay, these are things that people believed in that worked for them. You understand? Mm -hmm. So if you are going to that aspect, okay, I feel sorry, like sorry, I'm sorry to cut you short. You said rituals are part of our traditional religion, yeah. but I don't think no rituals in what sense? I don't think killing people. Yes, that's what I want to say. Well, well I don't think killing people. I, I understand uh, rituals, sacrificing goals, sacrificing I think, I think the other thing things. Is, but I don't think. Is, I think. May I? I think. Okay. And for me, sorry, sorry to cut you short, Idris. In the holy days, I feel like the only people I feel like they even use for ritual motive. Maybe somebody that offended somebody. Maybe yeah. you, you offend. Maybe. Yes. So I feel. May I feel okay? Actually, the abbalist tell or the whoever is involved tell them okay. This is the consequence. Okay. But if you want to go on with this, they give them like a very difficult start to do. Just look at that, the one that happened recently. That is, for me, is the most ridiculous tax. Like, it's very taxing, you understand? Okay. Okay. You tell them, you tell them, uh, go and bring the head of a lady, you understand? And it's very hard. Even me, I can't even kill chicken. And I, feel, I feel they give them this, this tax to scare them away okay but when you when you okay when when you come when back you with it, it they feel that okay yeah you're, 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 you're really, really, really mean business. this really mean well me, yes. me, i feel like time has changed things have improved and we've we've gathered more experience and knowledge so i feel like there are things we shouldn't we shouldn't like condone you understand mm. ritual is not something we should condone mm. at a particular period in the world maybe that was a way of thinking and doing things but i feel like right now i feel we should I feel like, right now I feel like we should um we should move because the thing is I feel Africa is like hundreds of years behind yeah. behind you understand so I feel if we don't abandon this uh, um old way of thinking and still do ritual honestly like I really don't know what to do but still bringing it back to um our topic of um, material lifestyle and this thing I personally feel like we need to start we need to start um praising and we start exalting little works that hard work, works that yeah work, for example we need to start celebrating for example if you go to a, a, a function and you want to invite a carpenter or somebody or a toilet we need to we need to like praise these people yeah. okay yeah you understand so that people want to aspire to be like them it's because when you go to events 
and they, they call somebody and they pay. you don't even know the source the source of wealth of the person yeah, yeah. but because the person have money you, you see you kind of downgrade the other mm-hmm. so i feel like this kind of profession that the society has looked down on as many other jobs by the time we start like praising these jobs like start you see that we start giving we start celebrating yeah, we, by the time we start celebrating these jobs you see that we start giving the society the younger ones a, a, we start giving them an atmosphere to uh, you understand to feel like okay whatever they are doing you understand because most of these these young boys most of them they, you'll be surprised that some of them actually have skills that they learn yeah, yeah. yeah. some of them are mechanics some of them are th- but because they feel like that is like it's not bringing money yeah. not like it's, it's not, not bringing that, money it it's is bringing them because they feel them like the, 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 the yeah I, i'll use the word the hype Okay, yes. the hype. Yes. yes. Okay, they are not celebrating them. Yeah. That job. The job. Yeah. Okay. That's why they feel like yeah. But on the, on the on the other hand, in 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 civilized countries, you see carpenters that are invited to universities to come and give lecture on on furniture works. Exactly. You understand exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. So it uh, is. It yes. is. So um, Femi, thank you for thank this you for insightful episode. Um, yeah. And um, in case you are just joining us. Um, you've missed a lot, but you've not missed. You can also catch this episode on YouTube. Just search NTA Belk that you see it. And um, thank you once again for coming on the show. We are really grateful. And, and this is actually a delightful topic that everyone... Exactly. Every youth must actually see this. So, um, Roda, do you have anything to say? Well, me? for me, I'll just say let everybody be very careful. I feel like contentment is key, like you rightly yes. said. So I feel but contentment should be the exactly the key word. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let it. every youth be contented. Let everybody work at their own pace. Don't let anybody intimidate you or uh-huh. maybe push you to do what you don't want to do. Yeah. And I feel like our parents will let us try to inculcate good morals in our children because I feel like the fear of God is the beginning of yeah. wisdom. If, yeah. they, if there's fear of God in you, I feel like there's some certain like our parents should stop. Our parents should stop like stop pressurizing kids Jeez. into exactly. acquiring things. You understand? Exactly. Let everybody be. Our journey through life is unique. Exactly. That's why we don't. You understand? Exactly. Stop. exactly. So um, thank you, thank you for staying with us and, yeah. and see, you see you next week, week on another interesting episode, episode of, of Youth Service. Bye. Bye.